All right, so we finish up. Um, still a few tools left that we demonstrated last week, and uh, I'll go make a little video here of those. The art history brush, the background eraser tool, the magic eraser tool, the type options, special shapes, and the rotate view. So let me uh, grab my Photoshop here. I've just started here with the cardinal. I'm just going to quickly demonstrate these. Remember, you can use any of the images, and I encourage you to use something other than than what I'm about to do, because all I'm about to do is just show you very quickly what they do. Okay, under the history brush is the art history brush. Now, for this tool that I've been talking about a lot but never demonstrating is uh, it's a kind of a it's an effort to make things look a little bit more drawn. And if you run this over that, you can see how it uh, kind of treats the image. The options up here will kind of describe what some of these do. There's a uh, short, tight option, a tight medium, tight long, tight loose medium. And when you, when you choose one of these other ones here, and then remember it's all uh, kind of uh, around how you have these other settings as well. I've got the opacity turned down. That just kind of slows the action. And you can see how it, how it kind of does a almost a painterly kind of thing to the uh, image here. I'm just going to undo a few of those. Command Z. And uh, of course you can change the opacity. You can change the tolerance. Tolerance is kind of a multiplier. It sort of makes it act faster. And so you can, I think the default is to actually to have that on zero. And you can see if I, if I then turn it up it makes all that happen a little. Oops, actually, it's it's making it die down. So maybe I've got it backwards. Okay. Okay, but mess with your uh, options here, and the uh, if you're using a stylus, which I'm using right now, try and see what how these also uh, affect the object. If you with that one and the and the uh, pressure, the added option of using the stylus, it really changes it quite a bit. Uh, so, you know, see what it does with it, with and without it. You can see it's quite a bit, it's quite uh, exaggerated. Okay, um, try all these options here. Try it with or without the uh, options here. And then uh, whatever you end up doing to it, I've got an awfully active one going here now. Let me turn this down a bit. You can see how it uh, treats things differently. Okay, uh, The uh, history brush will undo things that you've done to it. So if you want to bring that image back in, you can run the history brush every place where you've, where you've used the art history brush. So the art history brush uh, kind of making it have a little bit more of an artistic quality. If you want to reset your tool you can see what the defaults are here. The opacity is set to 100, and you can kind of tell how it's acting there. Okay. Okay. Change the area of the uh, brush and the sizes here, and get a different kind of a, an effect with your art history brush. Okay. Remember, for those to work, you cannot move the image. So even if you make a duplicate layer, don't move it. Don't try to put them side by side or you lose all the action of the art history and the history brush. Okay, the uh, magic eraser, there's several options under the eraser here. There's a regular eraser that we've used several times. The magic eraser is kind of a cross between the magic wand and the regular eraser. And it works like this when I click in an area it just finds congruent uh, values and erases them. Okay, and I'm just clicking. Okay, and I'll undo some of that. Okay, if I compare that to what the magic wand does, you'll see that it's very similar, except that the magic wand is just selecting just selecting areas rather than erasing them. Okay, so that's basically what the uh, what the uh, 
magic eraser does. The background eraser is good at, at finding areas where the contrast is sharp enough to uh, for it to discern what can be erased and what can't be. On this cardinal image, it does pretty good up here next to the next to the land. There are places though across the back of the bird that it just has a little trouble not erasing part of the bird. Okay, and, and that's what the uh, background eraser is supposed to do is to take soft backgrounds and eliminate them or or softly erase them. You can see me I'm pressing pretty hard with my stylus here to try to do this and for some images it works really well. If you use the yellow flowers it works really well for that. So I'm going to undo some of that. That's the magic eraser. Okay. The uh, other things here, uh, the type tools are some pretty interesting type tools that we haven't talked about very much. There is a vertical type tool that some of you used already. Just be careful with vertical types. Sometimes it's really hard to read. The horizontal type mask tool will mask uh, will mask images. If I can get it to type here, it seems like I noticed here that it didn't uh, really work very well with my with my stylus. So I'm going to try that again. I'm just going to try to click with it. Click, and it puts up a mask. And you can see here that it's then it's uh, typing across here with that mask that we saw earlier with the quick mask tool. That's what that green is that you see coming up here. And I'm trying to hover over it right there. It is the quick mask mode. Remember we, we used this a little bit when we were um, doing some special selections like on the parked car and that sort of thing. Now this, uh, this uh, type mask will actually provide a selection. Before you... Uh, before you click back to your move tool here, make sure you've got your spelling just right and anything else that you want to do with regard to type. Make it bolder, make it uh, closer together. Remember you can use your uh, you can use your uh, type uh, uh, options up here to make it uh, flush left or, or flush right. Use your character panel to put type closer together. You can select the whole thing and and make some edits before you finally decide, you know, if you make a misspelling or something like that, do it before you touch the move tool. Because as soon as I touch the move tool, it is now just a selection. It's just a selection. It's part of this uh, selection on this one, this one layer that I've got. Now I'm going to unlock the layer just so we have a little bit more functionality here. You may have to do that too. But you can see what happens here with the, with the move tool. I can actually bring part of that image into the type. And I'm just moving that around now, and you can see how it just ripped that type right out of there. If you want to move the selection without taking the background out, use the use the marquee tool. Remember, you can do that. You can move selections with the marquee tool, just like we did when we were working with all the other images all uh, all semester. This is a selection. You can put it on its own layer by clicking at the bottom and adding a new layer. You can paint into it so that you have so that you have color coming into the type. There it is with just a black with a black soft brush. You can see that effect. You can change your color, of course. Get a different color. And you can put new color. Didn't take it. Okay, let's try this. You can paint into whatever. Remember, it's selection. However you make a selection, it's still just a selection. It's the part that you can now uh, that you can now change. And so any of this that you want to do with it, you can paint into it. You can do your distortions. You can do any of the stuff that we do with filters, any, any of that stuff at all. And since I put it on a separate layer, I can also turn it off. I can make it less opaque. Right? Okay. You can bring the selection back down to the original layer and take out that background. Okay, the color is still up here. Okay, so mess with that uh, with the type uh, with the horizontal type mask tool. There is a vertical one as well. Again, just be cautious with vertical type. Not a big fan of vertical type, although I have seen some really cool uses of it lately. All right, I'm just going to undo some things there.
Okay. Uh, we've got the uh, special shapes tools. Remember, it's under these under these basic shapes tools. There's a custom shapes function. If you look up here, after you click right there and select the, sp the special shapes, the custom shapes, then up here are some or is a kind of a library of different uh, shapes that you can use. Now, if you're missing any or you don't see very many choices there, there's a whole bunch under this little gear button where you can get other uh, shapes as well. If you want, if you want to append it and make it longer, now I've got some musical shapes in there as well. Okay, for these, it's just a simple select a shape and then draw a shape. If you want it to constrain, press the shift key. That way, it doesn't change. Okay, you can fill it with color from up here and make it any color you want. You can, it, it should make a new layer. We did have one student that said that theirs kept putting uh, additional putting shapes on the same layer. I didn't get a chance to check into that, but usually what happens, the, the normal mode for this is for every time you draw a shape, it creates a new layer. Okay, now again, you can fill those with any color that you want. Okay, I'd like to see you do something with these that is creative, something that's not just messing around like I'm doing here. All right, special shapes are right there. The rotate view finally is uh, nothing more than just a, a kind of a viewing option. It's under the hand tool. Click on rotate tool. Its shortcut is R. And all it's designed to do is to is to turn the image so that you can see the image at a different angle. In other words, if I wanted to see what would the bird look like if its tail and its back were level this way. It doesn't really give you the options to, to keep it there. As soon as I click on the crop tool, it wants to click back. Okay, it's just a viewing tool. That's all it is. Sorry about that. Okay, it's just a viewing tool, the rotate view tool. Okay, all right, not any, no, nothing to document there. I just want you to be aware of it. Okay, that's it.